Okay, everyone, it's time to get started. It's good to see you tonight. Hope all of you are having a good week. I want to begin by sharing some announcements with you tonight before we have our prayer request, um, just to refresh your memory on some things. Um, our men's Bible study will be next Monday night, August the 8th at 7 p.m. Our guest speaker will be Michael Lane, and uh, he will be sharing on some subject matter that all the men need to hear. And so I want to encourage all you guys to be here if you can at 7 o'clock next Monday evening. Then we'll have our outdoor baptism service this coming Sunday, August the 7th at 2 p.m. at Charlie Gamble's. Uh, that will be right. And I think, isn't there a house right? It's been a while since I've been, but isn't there, there a house or is that his house right across the road? Okay. Now, um, I, yeah. And so I sent out a phone tree this afternoon, our phone tree message with the physical address for everybody. But in case you didn't get that, it's 151 Roaring Gap Road, Elkin. And that's not Roaring Gap Church Road. It's Roaring Gap Road. 151 Roaring Gap Road. So we're looking forward to that. We should have five to baptize, the Lord willing. Be different being outside. Hopefully it won't be too awfully hot. And uh, if I remember, I think there's some trees there. It's been a while since I've been there. I've baptized there before. But uh, anyway, we're looking forward to that. Also, I will be concluding Next Steps class uh, this coming Sunday and Joe will be uh, starting a new Next Steps class. That will begin at 9 o'clock in the conference room. So, brother, you and I will meet in my office, if you don't mind. Um, August the 28th. I want you to put this on your calendar. I want to encourage you to be here. August the 28th, and that'll be uh, one of the Sundays we'll just have Sunday morning service. Russ Reeves from our North Carolina Baptist State Convention will be our guest speaker. And uh, I've been, Joe and I had a lengthy meeting with Russ and one of his associates um, just recently. And um, Russ knows a lot of what's going on in the SBC um, and knows a lot about the state convention. And uh, he has some information that he can share much better than I can. And so I've invited Russ to come and he's going to speak to us that Sunday morning. And uh, so I want you to be here, make plans to be here, and pray for him as he comes and uh, pray that we'll get the information that we need. Um, so I wanted to mention that. Also, we've had some deaths uh, this week uh, related to our church family. Jill Reinhardt's mom was found dead Monday morning. And uh, Jill is down there with her dad. The funeral will be at 2 o'clock. Friday afternoon, I think it's in Oak Ridge Community, somewhere outside of Greensboro or Kernersville. Okay. Uh, so remember Jill and her family. And then I found out today that uh, Pat Prim's sister passed away. Uh, she had cancer and uh, she died. I spent quite a while visiting with Randy uh, today and then I got to see Pat afterwards and uh, had had prayer with, with Randy. And so please remember that family. And then I'm not at liberty to share who it is. I probably shouldn't even say a word, but um, I, I spoke with the son. But then right after I spoke with the son, I spoke with another relative that told me not to share anything because all the family had not been contacted. But we had a death right here in our community this afternoon, just a little, just a short time ago. And um, God knows the family. He knows who they are. And uh, so please, please pray for them. So we've had three deaths just this week. Um, please lift these families up. And they, this is in the way of prayer requests as well as, well as announcements. Pray for the services this coming Sunday. Um, I would appreciate that. Pray for Joe and Annika that they will get back safely. And I want you to add these to the prayer list, if you would. 
remember Tyler and his family, our grandkids and daughter-in-law, they're leaving, I think, Friday, driving to California. So please pray God will give them traveling grace. That is a long trip from West Texas even. So please pray for them. And of course, remember Jill Reinhart and her family again. And KT, K uh, has COVID. Please remember K. Um, Lisa Landry. Uh, most of you know Lisa. She's in the hospital out here. She's been having shortness of breath. And so she went into the hospital, or went to the ER, I guess. And uh, uh, Dr. K, who's our cardiologist, has been checking her out. And um, I was there just a sh not long ago. I was there in the room with Lisa when one of the PAs came in and that I know and that is with the cardiology group out of the Baptist. And uh, she said that everything is pointing to Lisa having some blockages and may have had a light heart attack. They don't know for sure, but uh, they're, they're trying to get her in at the Baptist for them to do a heart cath on her. So she's there at Hugh Chatham right now. And, uh, but just remember Lisa, and she gave me permission to share with y'all tonight. And remember Pat Prim and her family. And I'd appreciate it. Ernest Ashley is a non-member there in Elkin Hospital. Uh, Isaac Dean is listed for heart surgery under upcoming procedures. Continue to remember my mom. I was talking to her uh, this afternoon when I got the call about the, the, the death and in the community. And uh, I uh, let my mom go, you know, abruptly to answer that other call. And anyway, uh, she's doing a little bit better. She's still having to nurse the leg. And they were, they've were they given her antibiotics by mouth. And She's having to keep it dressed and all, and they've cleaned, the doctor has cleaned it out and everything. But please remember, continue to remember her and my sister Mary. I'd appreciate that. Okay, I think that's all that I had to share tonight. Do any of you have any um, request? Any people you want to add to the prayer list tonight? We'll sure pray for her, Brother Gail Burchett. Let's remember her. And that's another thing we need to pray for, uh, Lisa. You know, uh, just like the PA said this afternoon and like it was with me, I had to wait about eight or nine days before I could get in to get a heart cath done. Uh, so, you know, when they found my trouble. And so it's, you, you know, unless you go in an ambulance and you're having a heart attack, it's just difficult to get in the hospital to get any kind of major procedure right now. So please pray God will just work all of that out for, for, the, for his grandmother and for, for Lisa. And I'd appreciate that. Anyone else? Any un, other unspoken? Owen? Let's remember Owen Reed. Okay, any others? Yes. Okay, Melinda. Don't know a last name. Don't have a last name. 
Okay, any others? William Adams. Okay. William Adams. All right, others? Yes, Kathy. I mean, what's, what's the child's name? I'm sorry. Ruby. Ruby, okay. All right, any others? Yes. Sean and I have a friend in Waynesville. His name is A.J. Clemens. Did you say Clemens or Clemens? P.L. P.L., okay. Well, praise the Lord. That's good, John. All right, others? Isaac Campbell. Isaac Campbell. Sam, how's Elizabeth? Amen. Just continue to pray for Sam and Elizabeth. Others? Our schools and all the basic things that need to be healed. Okay. Okay, all of our public schools and the vacancies that need to be filled and certainly all the students and teachers. By the way, our prayer walk at CBL is coming up, so let's not forget that. And then afterwards, we will leave CBL and go to the park, and all the groups that are going throughout the county um, into the schools praying, they will all meet down there for a final prayer time at the park. Okay, any others? Yes. Yes, Don Simpson, who had a knee replacement. Anyone else before we pray? Yes. I hope that everybody prays for our nation every day and our leaders, our military. Oh. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yes. People in Kentucky. All right. If there are no others, we will spend some time in prayer tonight. Sam Jester, I'm going to ask you if you would kick us off tonight in prayer. And uh, anyone that feels led to pray, you, you pray. And then when we've everyone's had an opportunity that wants to pray out loud, then, then I will close us in prayer. So, Sam, would you begin our prayer, please?
Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together tonight on this Wednesday night to share a prayer request and, Lord, to pray to you and to study your word. I pray we'll never take any opportunity that we have to come together for granted. And, Lord, that we will use our opportunities wisely and, Father, that uh, we can sharpen each other's lives through fellowship and through your word as we listen to your word. Lord, I pray we'll take it to heart and, and uh, Lord, we'll use it in our lives and, God, that you will help us to grow spiritually. Lord, I pray tonight for all of the names that have been mentioned here tonight, for all the requests that have been made. I pray for those that are unspoken. You know each and every person. You know their heart. You know their concerns. You know their burdens. You know their needs. And you know those that are on their hearts. And so, Father, we lift those up to you tonight as well. I pray especially for those that have lost loved ones, those who are bereaved tonight. Lord, we pray that you will comfort them. You're the God of all comfort. And we thank you that you're faithful to your people. And Lord, no matter what we face in life, you extend to us the grace that we need to sustain us and keep us through whatever adversity we may encounter in life. I pray for those that are physically ill. I lift them up to you, some who have, have COVID, some heart problems, and Lord, um, other issues. We lift up those to you tonight. But Father, more importantly, we lift up those that are lost. We especially want to lift up Owen and all of those that are listed on our prayer sheet tonight whose first names are listed only. But God, we thank you that you know each person. You know each one who placed a name on that list and why they placed it there. They were concerned about their salvation. And Father, we pray for those that are lost. That should be our desire is to share the gospel and to pray for those that are lost that they will be saved and to try to reach them. And I pray that you will give each of us as members of this body a passion to reach lost people with the gospel. I pray, Father, that you will give us opportunities to witness, that you will put lost people in our path and you will give us the words to say that we might say something that you could use in their lives to, to reach them, to touch their hearts, and to reach them and, and, and bring them to the place in their life that they will hear the truth, understand the truth, and embrace the truth. Oh, Father, I pray that you will help our church as we seek to serve you here in this community and and our nation and around the world. Uh, Lord, uh, there are missionaries that we support, not only here in North America, but on other parts of this globe that, that we pray for them tonight. Uh, Lord, we ask that you bless all the ministries that we support financially and prayerfully. We pray for our ministries here at the church, and we pray for our student ministry and our children's ministry. Uh, Lord, we pray for our men's Bible study and, and women's ministry team and all of our ministry teams and committees and our deacon body. Lord, we lift them up to you and we ask you, Lord, to please help us. And Father, I want to I wanna just bring to everyone's attention tonight and bring this up as well in my prayer now to you about our 4G campaign and, and Lord, what you would have us to do uh, Lord, as our vision team continues to pray and work uh, and seek your face and your will, I pray that you will uh, allow us to soon have some information that we can bring to the church and that we can um, perhaps make a recommendation that everyone will be pleased with. And uh, so, Father, we pray for wisdom and guidance. 
I pray for those that we're waiting on, um, that they can get the work done that we need to have done. And, and uh, so, Lord, just work all of these things out for our good and for your glory. And, Lord, I pray for the service, sun, services Sunday morning, Sunday school and worship. Uh, I pray for the baptismal service Sunday afternoon. I ask you, Lord, that uh, you just give us good weather. That it'll be cool and not be storming. I pray, Lord, that uh, we'll have a good crowd that will be there and can witness an outdoor baptismal service. And uh, I pray that all the candidates can show up and, Lord, that we'll all be healthy and well and eager to be there. And I pray that we will come eagerly and, and earnestly and prayerfully uh, Sunday morning uh, prepared to hear what you have for us. And Father, at this point, I don't know, I don't have a clue as to what you're leading me to do for Sunday morning. And I just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you'll speak to me this week uh, with all that I have going on. Lord, I, I pray that you'll give me the time I need to pray and to read your word and to study and to seek out your message for, for, for us Sunday morning. And I pray for all of the visitors that we have coming right now, people that are searching for a church home, uh, people are, who I hope and pray are searching for somewhere they can come and be a part and, and uh, Lord, be fed with the Word of God and learn and grow and, and want to hear truth and from your Word and will accept truth and act on that truth and live out that truth. Oh, Father, I pray that you will just help our church to be a beacon, to be a shining light on this hill. Uh, Lord, that, that it has been all of these many years that it has existed here. And Father, I pray that you will just draw people here. We, we know that we've lost people during the pandemic, but you're so faithful to, to send new people, and we should rejoice in that. And I thank you for those that are wanting to join, those that are willing to go through next steps and be baptized and do whatever they need to do in order to become a member of this church. And Father, I pray you'll just continue to do a work in the hearts of, uh, of people and bring them here, draw them here like a magnet, draw them here and let them find what they're searching for. And I pray the most important thing is that they'll find you here. Father, that they will, they will be refreshed and renewed in their spirit, in their minds, but God, they'll hear the truth of your word. And I pray that you will help me and all of our Sunday school teachers and all of those who handle the word of God to handle it accurately and, and, and scripturally and be, um, be everything that we need to be and, and to be able to communicate the truth of your word in such a way that everyone can understand it and that, Lord, that we will be blessed from it. And so, Father, we... We commit all of these prayer requests and all of these things that we've mentioned tonight to you. And we ask you, Father, to please just help us. And, oh, Lord, I pray that even though we're in this world, you will remind us daily that we are not of this world. Therefore, we're not to be like this world. And we're not to love this world, nor the things that are in this world. But, God, you have called us to, to be different and I pray that you will help us to be different. And so, Father, make us different through your spirit and your power. God, make us godly, make us holy. And Lord, help us to live godly for you every day and to be a living example of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For it's in his name that I pray and ask these things. Amen. Yes. Yeah, um, that's the one I had mentioned before y'all came in. I was told not to say anything because all the family hadn't found out yet. But I had spoken directly to Ken right before the service, and he told me it was okay. But then I got another call from another relative. And they said, don't say anything. So I was torn between <laughs> telling the church who it was, but that's who it was. it was. Since you've mentioned it, it was Bill Hooper. It was Ken's uh, dad. 
And uh, he was over, matter of fact, he was over at uh, Abby's and Bill, um, Bobby's house sitting next to the pool. And, it, and they said it looked like he just laid his head back and just went to sleep. So please remember that family there. Ken was taking it really well, and, and I'm so thankful for that. He said he knew where his daddy was, and he is whole now. He is well. So that's, that's, that was good news. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's open our Bibles and go to Psalm 91. This is a psalm we've been working through for the last couple of weeks. This will be uh, lesson three. Um, from this text. Tonight we'll finish it up and um, I hope this will be a blessing to you. Uh, you know this psalm has to do with the security of the godly. And I began sharing uh, at the first of this psalm, I shared a little out of the New Testament out of John chapter 10 where Jesus said that we um, he spoke about eternal security, and certainly all of us uh, want to feel secure in our relationship with the Lord, and if we're saved and born again, then certainly we are, according to the words of Jesus. Um, he says those who trust Him as Lord and Savior, that He gives unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And He says that He and His Father are one, and that we're in the Father's hands and no one can pluck us out of his hand. But here in the Old Testament, in this psalm, in Psalm 91, the psalmist is writing about and speaking about the security of all the godly. And so let's go back and let's just begin reading in verse 1. And we're going to read this entire psalm. We've already worked down through verse 7 um, but tonight we're going to go on and finish this entire psalm and go through verse 16. So let's go back and refresh our memories uh, from the text. And we'll begin in verse 1. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With a long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, as we complete this psalm, we must remember the many blessings that come in living in intimacy with the Lord. And that's what this psalm is talking about, having an intimate relationship with the Lord. The psalmist specifically mentions in this text that God is one's deliverer and protector. Therefore, there's no need for a child of God to fear. 
Remember the New Testament, we find that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and a sound mind. So we should not fear. But as we come to our text tonight, which we're going to be focusing on verses 9 and through really the net, uh, rest of the chapter 16, we see the psalmist uh, explains that no harm or disaster can happen to those who make the Lord their refuge. And that word refuge means a shelter, habitation or dwelling as long as the Lord is one's refuge, one is protected from evil and plagues. And that word plagues means stroke and disease. Now, he goes on to say in the text that the reason one need not fear is that the Lord will give his angels charge over his children to keep them in all their ways. Look at what he says in verse 11. For he says, verse 10, for there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And again, he's talking about the safety and the security that we have in, in God. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now, the word angels here, notice, is in the plural, not the singular. So he's not referring to one's guardian angel. And I'm sure you have heard many people uh, refer to that in your lifetime, especially in church. And uh, you may have had some teaching on angels. Matter of fact, I was thinking that I was preparing this lesson uh, for tonight, I was thinking that may be our next study when we get through here. We may do a study on, on angels. Uh, I see some of you smiling, so that sounds like maybe something you'd be interested in. I did a study many years ago. I don't know if I still have my notes on that or not, but um, on, on angels. But anyway, the word angels here means messenger or representative. So we're talking about a a spiritual being, a messenger of God, a representative of God. Now, we know that angels exist. And we know they exist because our God says in His Word that He created angels. It's interesting, when you begin to study about angels in the Bible, you will discover that angels are mentioned in 34 books of the Bible. Now, that's something. They're mentioned in 34 books of the Bible for a total of some 273 times, 108 times in the Old Testament, and 165 times in the New Testament. So, angels are real. And there are some people that don't believe in angels, but I do. And I hope that you do, because it's biblical. The Bible tells us that they exist. For example, in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 through 24, listen at these verses. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Angels. To the general assembly and church, the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. So there in Hebrews chapter 12, in those verses, the Bible refers to an innumerable company of angels. And then in Psalm 104, verse 4, the Bible says, Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers of flaming fire. So angels, like everything else, were created by God. Psalm 148, verses 2 through 6, Praise ye him, all his angels. 
Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Did you hear that? All of the things that I just read that are mentioned, the angels and the heavens of heavens and the stars of light, and all of these things were created by God, and angels were included in that. He hath also established them forever and ever. Did you hear that? He has established them forever and ever. That means evidently there's never an end. That once they are created by God, there is never an end. If you think about it, now, now think about this and what that verse says. If they are established forever and ever, that includes even the fallen angels. Now we know where they're going, don't we? They're going, they're going to the lake of fire with the, with the devil. But they, will they be in existence forever and ever? Absolutely. In the lake of fire. Because you see, all of those who go to the lake of fire, they're not consumed. They, they, they'll last forever. You see, that, that, that's what makes eternity. We can't grasp eternity. Not with our minds. We cannot grasp the length of eternity. It, 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 it's sort of impossible for us with our minds to grasp how long eternity really is. I mean, we think 100, 120 years is a long time on this earth, but that is nothing. That is absolutely nothing compared to eternity. And, and what makes eternity so, how do I want to say this? What makes eternity so bad for the lost is because of what the lost will be suffering during eternity. Because they will be in the lake of fire. And they will be suffering eternally forever and ever and ever. They will never be an end to the suffering. Never an end. And so it says that he has established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree... Now listen to this. If he says that he has established them forever and ever, the decree that he just made about that, he says, shall not pass. In other words, it's a done deal. You see, when God does something, it's, it's, it's done. It's not going back. He don't change his mind. It's done. And so the Bible says that this God has made this decree. He's created all of these things and they will last forever, and that includes angels. Now, H.L. Wilmington makes an interesting observation about angels, and I want to share this with you and, and listen to this. I hadn't thought about this, so I was preparing for this tonight. He states, and I quote, their number, referring to the number of angels that there are in existence. He says, and I quote, their number once completed at creation, was forever fixed. Did you hear that? Let me repeat that. He says, their number once completed at creation was forever fixed. This is assumed because we never read of God creating more of them. And Jesus said, they do not reproduce themselves. Now we remember that. I'm sure you remember that text. That's in Matthew twenty-two thirty. Angels do not reproduce like humans. Furthermore, since we are told they cannot die, Luke 20, 36, we conclude the original number of angels will never increase or decrease in size. For these reasons, they must be considered a company of beings and not a race. Did you hear that? A, they must be considered a company of beings and not a race, end of quote. I thought that was interesting. Hadn't thought about that. Now, notice that the text tells us that God will give his angels charge over thee. And, and it's interesting when you read this psalm, 
in one part of the psalm, it's like the psalmist is speaking about himself. And then you come to another part of the psalm and it's like the psalmist is speaking about other people, which includes him as well. And then you come to the last part of the psalm and it's like God is speaking to those who are his. But notice the text tells us that God will give his angels charge over thee. Thee meaning whom? Who's he talking about? The, the psalmist is referring to the godly. God will give his angels charge over the godly. So one of the things angels do is to protect God's children. Psalm 34, 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Did you hear that? Now, 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 are you getting this? He says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. And our text says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. In other words, God orders his angels to protect us wherever we go. Dr. Billy Graham told a story of the protective care of angels for Reverend John G. Patton. Some of you may have heard this story. Uh, who um, was a missionary in New Hebrides Island. Now listen to this. Hostile, and the story goes that hostile natives surrounded Patton's mission headquarters one night intent on burning the Patton's out. He and his wife, they were inside the mission. They, they were intent on burning the Pattons out and killing them. John Patton and his wife prayed all during that terror-filled night that God would deliver them. When daylight came, they were amazed to see the attackers unaccountably leave. And they thanked God as anyone would for delivering them. A year later, now listen to this, a year later, the chief of the tribe that had attacked the Pattons and the missionary home, the chief of the tribe was converted to Jesus Christ. And Mr. Patton remembered what had happened. And so he asked the chief what had kept him and the men that was with him that night from burning down the house and killing them. The chief replied in surprise, and I'm quoting this, who were all those men you had with you there? And the missionary answered, there were no men there, just my wife and I. The chief argued that they had seen many men standing guard, hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords in their hands. They seemed to circle the mission station so that the natives were afraid to attack. Only then did Mr. Patton realize that God sent his angels to protect them. The chief agreed that there was no other explanation. Could it be that God had a legion of angels to protect his servants whose lives were being endangered, end of quote. Now, isn't that something? That was told for a true story. That actually happened. You see, there, we don't realize this, but there is a lot of activity that goes on around us every day that we cannot see. It is in the spiritual realm and angels are spiritual beings. And when, if we do this study on angels, you will discover that there are times when angels can appear to people. Why does the Bible say, be careful who you entertain because you could be entertaining angels unaware? I, some of you have heard me tell this before, but some of you haven't, so I'm going to tell it again. Um, many years ago, right after we were saved, you know, Kathy and I, we traveled from job to job and we had a big mobile home. And so we moved our, took our home with us wherever we went from job to job. And, 
and we had moved down on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and I was from Columbus, Mississippi, and and uh, we lived there for a short time on a job, and then we left there, and we were uh, my my um, the owner of the company told me he said now. You take your trailer and take it on up to Kathy's mother's and par or park it somewhere in the central part of the state. And uh, he said, then I'll get with you later. And, um, you know, I don't know exactly where I'm going to send you. So that's what we did. So the guy came and, and try to make a long story short, the guy came, hooked the trailer. Well, he jackknifed his truck in our trailer and bent our trailer up. And, that, and then it, we were late getting off and getting started, and it was just a bad day. I'm telling you, it was a terrible day. I was trying to load all the blocks by myself and, and didn't have any help, and it was in the middle of the summertime. It was hot, and it was just a bad day. Everything went, if anything could go wrong, it went wrong. So we finally got hooked to the trailer, and it was a 12 by 60 mobile home. And at that time, that was the largest mobile home you could pull down the, the highways in Mississippi, and uh, so anyway, we finally got on the road and I was in my little pickup. I had a little Ford Courier and I was following, I was following the trailer house right behind it. And Kathy and, and Jennifer, Jennifer was just a little girl and she, they were behind me in her car. We, all of us had CB radios. That's how we communicated back then. And so the, the truck driver had a CB radio. So we, we've been on the road quite a while and we come through Laurel, Mississippi. And uh, so we stopped. Some of the siding had started coming off of our trailer and we stopped and we put the screws back in and tightened them up and everything. So we pulled out on Highway 15, headed on. We were going on. We didn't like much being to our destination and it was, the sun was going down. And so uh, we pull out and I'm, we pull out behind the trailer and we hadn't gotten on the road and gotten straightened out good to, to this lady came on the CB radio. And she says, how about that northbound mobile home up there? Well, I was listening, you know, and I didn't, I didn't say anything. Well, so the truck driver said, yeah, go ahead. This is that northbound mobile home. And this lady says, well, uh, you need to pull that mobile home over. And, uh, and he, he was sort of stunned like I was, and he, he just didn't go back to her. He didn't say anything. Well, in a minute, she came back on there again. And she said, how about that northbound mobile home? So he comes back to her. And she says, I told you, you need to pull that mobile home over. She says, I'm in the car with Constable so-and-so, and he's driving, and he told me to tell you to pull that mobile home over, that you are illegally pulling that mobile home down the highway. And he said, ma'am, I have all the legal papers right here in my hand or on my seat. And he said, we are legal. And he said, I'm trying to get to our destination, and we are going down the road. So in just a minute, she comes back again, and she says... The constable said, if you don't pull that mobile home over, he is calling the highway patrol. And so I get on the radio and I tell the driver, I said, just the first chance you get, pull over. So we, we didn't go too far down the road. It was on a two-lane highway, big trucks going everywhere, just a two-lane highway now. So we get to this grocery store and there's this, we could pull off at this grocery store and right on down side the road, the ditch, there wasn't hardly a ditch at all there and it was in the summertime and dry. So he pulled the trailer down there and he stopped. And I was right behind the trailer. And, but before we got there, the, the guy and this woman, they came flying around me and jumped in. And they had a little yellow Volkswagen or something that got between me and the trailer. So when we pulled up there, he jumps out, I get out, he pulls a gun. He pulls a gun and the guy in the, that's pulling our trailer, he's coming. He don't know what's going on back here behind because he's, he's 70 or 80 foot up front. So this guy's standing there with a gun. And, and, and so I'm, I'm walking around the front of the car and the guy's coming with the papers. And I walk around the front of the car and I see a tag he's got on the front of the car. He says, I'll meet you in church on Sunday. <laughs> so when he pulled that gun out, I, I walk around and get between him and he and the the guy that's driving the truck, pulling our trailer. And so the guy comes up with the papers. He had just stopped right there. He had the gun out there. And I said, hold on just a minute. I, I just, I, I, did, I wasn't thinking about the gun. I really wasn't. I said, hold on just a minute. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, I see that tag on the front of your car. I'll meet you in church on Sunday. I said, are you a Christian? I said, if you are, you're certainly not acting like one. And he sort of calmed down. So the guy comes up with the papers and, and get this, I'm standing there and I look around and this guy drives up in a pink Lincoln town car. 
It was a pink, pink colored Lincoln town car. He drives up in this town car and parks right behind us. And I'm, and he gets out and he's, he's got beautiful gray hair. He's got on a dark suit. I mean, he's dressed fit to kill. And he's just standing there, just standing there. And he just stood there the whole time while this, all this conversation was going on. Make a long story short, we had to, we had to park the trailer there. The guy unhooked from our trailer. We, had to, we stayed there in that trailer all night long. And I stayed there. I'll be honest with you. I stayed there with my shotgun loaded in my trailer. Make a long story short, my mama said, that guy in the town car was your angel. Whether he was or not, I don't know. But he, he didn't say a word, but he was there. And, and I, I don't know whether he was an angel or not. I don't know what part he, he played in it. But that night, that constable and those guys run back and forth, all up and down the road, I guess, waiting for us to leave. Come to find out, make a long story short, after we left the next morning, the guy came and got, hooked our trailer. We drove it to Kathy's mother's and we parked it. He did some research. Come to find out, they arrested that constable. It wasn't a week or two later for embezzlement. And I don't know what all they arrested that dude. He was going to steal our mobile home. I guarantee he was going to steal it. But anyway, the, the guy that was standing there with the white hair and in the, in the dark suit, Mama said, that had to have been your angel. It was God sent you an angel, and he was there to guard you. Whether or not he was, I don't know, but I thought I'd tell you that little story. But anyway, angels are there to protect us. The Bible says in Genesis 19, 1 through 20, the angels protected Lot from the Sodomites. Do you remember that? He protected them from the Sodomites. Angels protect from physical harm and give believers strength to overcome difficulties. Pictured here in, in this text as wild lions and dangerous snakes in verses 12 and 13. And if you'll recall, this is the exact text that Satan used on Jesus. Do you remember that at the temptation of Jesus? Do you remember what the devil told him? He put it on, up on top of the you know, pinnacle up there, and he told him, said, jump down, jump down. And this is the exact text that Satan used on Jesus. You know, what, what does that tell you? Well, it just shows that even God's most marvelous promises that he gives in the Bible can be foolish, foolishly applied and misapplied to people's lives. And that's exactly what the devil was doing. But the blessings of deliverance and protection come to all who trust in the Lord. And we find in verse 14, listen to this. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With a long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Bible tells us here in this text, that God himself spoke to affirm the psalmist faith. And he says, these blessings come because one sets one's love upon the Lord. God says, because he loves me, I will do several things. Number one, I will rescue him. Number two, I will make him great because he trusts in my name. Number three, when he calls on me, I will answer him. Number four, I will be with him in trouble, rescue him and honor him. And number five, I will satisfy him with a full life and give him my salvation. What a promise. What a promise God gives to those who are godly. And so as we conclude this psalm tonight, I, I hope you'll go back and occasionally and read that and refresh your memory about what God's word says to all of those that are godly and uh, who, who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And again, that refers to a place of intimacy that a person can have with God. And I hope all of us have an intimate relationship with the Lord tonight. I don't know about you, but, you know, I, I want to be more intimate with the Lord. There are times I feel like I'm not, that my relationship isn't what it should be or needs to be. And um, I guess all of us do at times. But uh, God is there for us and He loves us and that's, that's what salvation is all about. It is about bringing us into a permanent, eternal, intimate relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. Remember what Jesus said in John 17, 3. Eternal life is to know the one true God 
and the Son whom the one true God has sent to this world. And that word know means to have a relationship whereby a believer is bound to the Lord and the Lord is bound to the believer and they have a relationship with one another. Oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful thought that God, holy God in heaven, would want to have a relationship with us sinful humans. Man, and what a difference God can make in our lives. He's the one that makes all the difference. He's the one that changes us. He's the one that brings us to that place in our life and changes us so that we can have a relationship with Him. And God imputes to us the very righteousness of Christ so that we can come into His presence according to the Word of God with boldness. With boldness. Mm. Let's pray. Father, Thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for reminding us of what you so desire to have with every person. Your word says you do not want one to perish, no, not one. You want all people to come to the knowledge of the truth so that they can enter into and live in an intimate relationship with you. Not only here and now on this earth, but Lord, forever in eternity. Father, we thank you for your promises. When we don't have feelings, when we don't feel what we want to feel and like we think we need to feel, God, let us remember the promises. Let us go back to the word of God that is tangible, that is truth, that is absolute truth because you are holy God and you cannot lie. So Father, help us to depend upon your word and your spirit that lives within us. And as we leave here tonight, Father, help us to live for you daily. And I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you for coming.